Hey everybody, my name is GamerGuppy and today I have something exciting to show you. Some of you might already know what it is about since I uploaded a teaser for a map more than a month ago. So what this mean machine does is, it adds 10 weapons to vanilla Minecraft. So the setup of this video is as follows. First I will showcase these 10 weapons. And then I will start explaining the working of the machine itself. The explanation is quite long, but I think the topic is worth it, because the machine works by the method of ray casting and it simulates bullet physics. So if you're interested in how these things work, then give it a shot. So the weapons are actually carrots on a stick, which are retextured to look like the weapons from the Halo series. They look a little bit flat, because they are not 3D models, but just simple images. To achieve this I used the Minecraft 1.9 feature to assign different textures to an item based on its durability. But that is not the only 1.9 feature that makes this machine work. Originally all of this machine was built sometime in Minecraft 1.8, but it was incredibly laggy. But then the snapshots introduce new command blocks and change the way particles are rendered. And now the machine works surprisingly well. But be aware, you still need a pretty good computer to run this machine smoothly. Well that's enough talk for now, let's have a look at what each weapon does. So how does this contraption work? Well there are just too many command blocks to give you a full description, so instead let me give you a more intuitive and conceptual approach as to how this machine works. Now be aware it can get a little bit mathematical, however it doesn't matter if you do not understand a specific step fully, the most important thing is to gain a general understanding, or as my teacher used to say, try to get the aha erlebnis. Let's start with what guns do. Guns fire projectiles, and projectiles have a speed and a direction. We can represent the speed and direction mathematically with a vector. A vector can be thought of as some sort of arrow, which points into the direction the projectile goes and has a length that represents a physical quantity, such as in our case the speed or velocity of the projectile. So what we need to do is construct such a vector, such that we can then apply motion to the projectile accordingly. So how do we do that? Normally when you construct a vector, let's say from this gold block to that diamond block, you say oh, let's move 7 blocks in the x direction, minus 4 blocks in the z direction, 
and then 6 blocks up in the y direction. And there we are. We can now express our vector, that is, its length and direction, in these x, y and z parameters. We say the vector is now given in Cartesian coordinates. But we have yet another method, less people are familiar with, to describe this very same vector. So how does this work? Well, let's assume this is our starting orientation. Then we can say, okay, let's rotate minus 30 degrees around the y-axis to our left, and then look 35 degrees up. Finally, we then move about 10 blocks into that general direction. And see, we are at the exact same place again. Now we say the vector is expressed in so-called spherical coordinates. These are called spherical coordinates because when assuming a fixed radius, all coordinates would lie on the surface of a sphere with radius r. So now I hear you thinking, what's the deal? Why talk about spherical coordinates when x, y, z coordinates are so much more intuitive? Well, to understand that, let's have a look at the information we have available to construct such a vector. At the moment of shooting the gun, we know the player's current location, but not the exact location of our target. Therefore we cannot compute the parameters dx, dy and dz required to construct a vector in Cartesian coordinates. What we do know however is the player's orientation, which is given by the two angles, phi and theta. Furthermore, we are of course free to choose any value for the velocity of the projectiles. So from this we can conclude that spherical coordinates are the logical choice for constructing the vector we need. So for the spherical coordinates, we need to obtain the rotation values theta and phi as accurately as possible. So how do we obtain these rotation values with the command blocks? Well this happens in this segment of the contraption. One part of this segment is responsible for obtaining phi, and the other one for obtaining theta. As you see, the extraction process happens in two stages, for each angle. Stage 1 obtains the angle with one degree of precision, and stage 2 obtains the angle with three digits of precision. Since digits can't be stored in command blocks, we multiply all the angles by a thousand, such that we obtain an integer. Now that we have successfully obtained a value for theta and phi, all we need is still a radius. This radius corresponds to the velocity of the projectile, which we are free to give any value we like. This is done at this part of the contraption. Each column you see applies weapon specific properties to the projectile. Think of accuracy, damage, but also the velocity of the projectile. Only one command block per column is responsible for applying the velocity to that specific type of projectile. After this step, we have successfully constructed a vector in spherical coordinates. But constructing the vector is only half of the job. Of course, we also need to apply motion to the projectile based on this vector. Two commands that can be used for this are the teleport command and the entity data command with the motion tag. For practical reasons, which I will later explain, the teleport command is the one we will use. The teleport command only accepts XYZ or Cartesian coordinates to teleport an entity around. So to apply motion to the projectile, we need to convert these spherical coordinates somehow back to Cartesian coordinates. Now with elementary trigonometry, so Katoa, you can demonstrate that this conversion is as follows. Some of you might have spot the next problem already. The conversion requires the use of sines and cosines. We don't have access to those kind of operations using the default scoreboard operations. Instead we need to find an approximation. The first approximation that comes to mind is the Taylor series approximation. The more terms you add, the higher the accuracy of the approximation. Now the problem is, powers are not a supported scoreboard operation either in Minecraft. Especially fractions as powers are difficult to deal with. Fortunately there is an alternative. This approximation is called Bhaskara's sine approximation. A paper I consulted claimed that Bhaskara's sine approximation is at least 20 times more accurate than Taylor's approximation. This conversion takes place at this part of the contraption. At the end of the conversion, each projectile has an X, Y and Z score, which is the vector we need to apply motion to the projectile. So where and how is this motion applied? Well that all happens in this huge module. It might look overly complex, but there is a lot of repetition going on. These command blocks are responsible for adding the bulk motion to the projectile. This happens in small steps, such that we can perform accurate checks whether the projectile collided with a block or entity. This chunk of command blocks fine-tunes the motion, such that in the end the projectile goes where you want it to go. 
After the motion has been added, we check whether the projectile has collided with a block. Thereafter, checks are done whether the projectile has collided with an entity. This has to be done three times, such that we are able to hit short, medium and tall entities. Lastly, these command blocks are responsible for the bouncing of certain projectiles. So why do we add the motion in multiple steps? Doesn't it save us a lot of command blocks if we would add all the motion all at once? To understand that, let's proceed with our example. Let's say our projectile has a radius of 2, meaning it has a velocity that equals 2 blocks per tick. If we would add all the motion all at once, then we would only be able to do a collision check once we are at a new location. We do not know, however, what happens in between. Now as you see, we could potentially miss a lot of obstacles this way. The bullet could fly through many entities or blocks without ever noticing these. To fix this, we could add motion incrementally, such that we can carry out more collision checks along the way. To achieve this, we first add bulk motion to the projectile, in small steps of roughly 0.2 blocks in length. Then we fine tune the motion, such that the projectile arrives exactly at the position we want it to be. Every time we added motion, we also carried out a collision check. This procedure is repeated until a collision has taken place. While the projectile is in air, weapon specific properties such as sound and particle effects are added to the projectile at this module. But also the calculations that are done for the projectiles that are affected by gravity are done here. How do these gravity calculations work? Very simple. Remember that at the end of the conversion earlier, we were left with an x, y and z value, which corresponds to the velocity of the projectile in each direction. These values are presumed to be constant for most projectiles that are unaffected by gravity. However, projectiles that are affected by gravity have an extra term added to their y value, which is minus g times t squared. This simple formula gives you the nice parabolic ballistic trajectories from for example the fuel rod gun, the grenades and the flamethrower. This module on the other hand defines what happens with projectiles that have collided with a block. Before the projectile is deleted, sound or particle effects can be added. For the rocket and flamethrower, explosions and fire are added here. Once an entity has been marked as being hit by a projectile, then this module defines if anything weapon specific should happen with that entity. Think of an explosion if an entity has been hit by a rocket launcher. Next up, damage is dealt over here. Also the blood splatter animations are done here. These are some timers for players that are on fire or have been hit by a sticky grenade. Finally, this module is responsible for showing custom death messages. These death messages show the killer, the victim, but also the weapon that was used in the process. So how do we know who was killed by who? Well, the system employs an ID system. Every player has a unique ID, and when the player uses a gun, the projectile inherits that same ID. Once an entity has been hit, the ID of the projectile is saved onto that entity. Later on, we can use this to trace back the shooter and give points accordingly. But this ID system has one more major usage. Namely, at the moment of shooting a projectile, you share the same location as the projectile, and you will be marked as being hit. So we can use this ID system to avoid hitting yourself with your own projectiles. This is done by subtracting the entity ID from the projectile ID. If this gives a zero, then we know the entity that is being shot and the projectile had the same ID. If this is the case, damage is negated. And that's it. You now have a solid understanding of this contraption. Well, conceptually that is. I hope you found this explanation useful and I hope it gave you some insight in how ray casting and bullet physics work. These are mechanics that are frequently used in almost all games. Furthermore, I hope you can put the contraption to good use in your map or minigame. As of now, the contraption comes with 10 different weapons, but it supports 6 more. I might make a future tutorial on how to make your own weapon using this system. It is very easy and requires approximately 5 command blocks. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe or comment. It would really stimulate me to make more of these in-depth explanations. Because I do spend often more time in explaining the contraptions than I spend time in building these. Anyway, have a good day and as always, guppy out. Mm -hmm.